The staff used by Moses in performing his miracles was created during the twilight of the eve of the first Sabbath of creation, from a branch of the tree of knowledge in the Garden of Eden, where the four rivers flowed. The staff is first mentioned in the book of Exodus chapter 4 verse 2, when God appears to Moses in the burning bush. This is the squatter man event and directly related to other stories across the world, such as Hermes Trismegistus carrying his staff, also known as a caduceus. William Hayes Ward in 1910 discovered that symbols similar to the classical caduceus sometimes appeared on Mesopotamian cylinder seals. He suggested the symbol originated sometime between 3000 and 4000 BC and that it might have been the source of the Moses epic. A. L. Frothingham incorporated William Ward's research into his own work, published in 1916 in which he suggested that the prototype of Hermes was an oriental deity of Babylonian extraction, represented in his earliest form as a snake god. From this perspective, the caduceus was originally representative of Hermes himself in his early form as the underworld god Nenshidu, messenger of the Earth Mother. The behavior of snakes and their facial features seemed to imply that they were intelligent, that they lived by reason and not instinct, and yet their thought processes were as alien to humans as their ways of movement. What was the staff held by these historical figures? Could the staff be to Moses what the thunderbolt was to Zeus, for example? And in this context, what exactly is being described here? Snakes were regularly regarded as guardians of the underworld or messengers between the upper and lower worlds. The Gorgons of Greek myth were snake women, a common hybrid whose gaze would turn flesh into stone the most famous of them being Medusa, of course. Nagas, the demon cobra, and Naganese were human-headed snakes whose kings and queens, who lived in jewel-encrusted underground or underworld paradises, and who were perpetually at war with Garuda the sunbird. In Egyptian myth, every morning the serpent Aopep, symbolizing chaos, attacked the sunship, symbolizing order. Aopet would try to engulf the ship, and the sky was drenched red at dawn and dusk with its blood, as the sun god Ra fought to restore order. Although Ninshida was a power of the netherworld, where he held the office of throne bearer, he seems to have originally been a tree god, for his name apparently means Lord Productive Tree. In particular, he probably was god of the winding tree roots since he originally was represented in serpent shape. When pictured in human form, two serpent heads grow from his shoulders in addition to the human head, and he rides on a dragon. This information shows us a progression from order to chaos. In Sumerian mythology, he appears as Adapa's myth as one of the two guardians of Anu's celestial palace alongside Demuzi. He was sometimes depicted as a serpent with a human head. From these connections, we can surmise that this was yet another representation of the squatter field. Anu with the two in this case. Nanshida is one of the two, as witnessed in the sky in the celestial palace as described in ancient text. It's just another step in the evolution of the squatter man event, but what do you guys think about this anyway? Comments below and as always, thank you for watching.